Ephesians 2 verse 12, it says that at that time you were without Christ, yep. being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God yep. in this in the world. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I've seen in this life that are really sad. You know, I've experienced seeing people, to watch people watch their loved ones die and how sad, and I've experienced it myself. But I want to say this on the authority of God's Word. There's nothing sadder than to see people without Christ. Right. Amen. And by the grace of God, I want to preach on what it means to be without God. And I thought as a sister sung that song, what a fitting song to start this message with. And you know, if, he, if you look in this scripture, he uses this word Paul does without twice, but it don't mean the same thing. When it says in the little phrase right there where it says that at that time you were without Christ, that word without there means godless. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, if you go down to the end, it says, and without God in the world, that word without there, it means to be apart from or by itself. Yeah. So either way you slice this, to be without God, you're without. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that you know you have that you can do without. Uh, you know, uh, as a young kid, I, I started collecting some pocket knives, and I have a small collection. I don't use them. Yeah. I don't particularly have to have them, but they're mine. Yeah. I can do without them. Yeah. Amen? And, uh, you know, we can name all multitudes of things that we have at home that are stuff that we could live without. But I want to say this, if you're here and you're lost without God, you're not going to make it without Him. And as a saved person, you know what you're going to find out? This, ain't, this, this thing of being saved ain't about me. It's about Him. And the older I get, the more I realize that I, I can do without a lot of things, but I've got to have Jesus every day. I've got to have a good dose of Him being around me. It, you know, church is more, it's, it means more when God shows up, amen. When you come here and God is home, amen, that's, that means more to me. Now, I want to read a few scriptures before I get in the message because they, uh, uh, as the psalmist, uh, this is probably one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 73 as a psalmist begins to write and he, he talks about how that he's kind of I'll just read verse 1 he said truly God is good to Israel even to such as are of a clean heart but as for me my feet were almost gone my steps has well nigh slipped and he starts reading and he starts writing about he's kind of discouraged and he's depressed and he's, he's just kind of downhearted but then he gets down to verse 17 and he says until I went into the sanctuary of God you know what? You go out into that world and you see all that they have and all the things that you have to do without, you'll get discouraged. But when you come here and you get a true focus of what life really consists of, you get your focus on something that's really or someone that re kind of vitalizes your life. Look what he says. He says, then I understood their end. Yeah. Not his end, their end. Yeah. Uh, I want to say if here today and you don't know him, I'm going to describe where you're at today. Right. Look what he says. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. You know what that means? You're one heartbeat, one second away from a lake of fire for eternity. Right. You're in a slick place right now, brother. If you're lost without God. Right. He says... Look at this. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. I want to say this today. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you're almost to the point of destruction. Right. He says, how are they brought into desolation? As in a moment? A moment. That means before this, my, my hand on my watch can go around one time, you're out of here. Right. One time is a minute. Yep. Just from one click to the next click is a second. You're that close to going to hell. Huh? 
He said, As a dream when one awaketh, so, Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. I want to say this. We've got a loving God right now, but that same loving God, when you die without Him, He will be an unmerciful uh, judge to you. He will show no mercy at the judgment uh, on the white throne judgment. He will not show any, any mercy. Now, what does it mean to be without God? Well, Paul describes that in verse 1. Here's what he says. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Now, when he says were, that means your past. He said, first of all, people that are without God, you know what they are? They're dead to God. They're, they're dead. That means, Brother James, coming to church don't even uh, come into their thoughts. The, the church could burn down and they wouldn't even drive by to see what the fire was about. It don't mean nothing to them. First of all, to be dead to God means that you have no biblical information. Uh, you don't know what's going to... We think all this stuff is just by happen chance. I want to tell you that God walks up and down every path in this world and He is divinely orchestrating everything that's going on. There is no luck. There is no happen chance, Brother Josh. There's a, there's a God who's got His hands into everybody's life. He knows you here. He knows your mama. He knows your daddy. He knows your grandma. Everything about you. He knows the very hairs on your head. He knows what you're thinking right now. You can say, I wish he'd shut up. God said, I know you said that, but I want to tell you, he's showing mercy today. Why? Because to be without God is the most horrible thing you can be without. He said, there's no biblical... You know, here's, here's what they think. That if we can get us another president, things will turn around. If we could get us a good governor things will turn around you know why they believe that because they don't have no bible to guide them because i know brother brian the bible says that evil men will wax worse and worse it don't surprise me that our government is against little babies having a life huh Amen. that they kill babies and don't think nothing about it it don't surprise me that they think it's all right for two women to get married and for two men to get married. Why? Because evil seducers are wax worse and worse. That's government position people. Yeah. People are a high authority. Right. They don't have no Bible to guide them. They think money is the answer. Yeah. We're living in a world, if you're success, you have to have money. They think Donald Trump's a success. Donald, in the eyes of God, Donald Trump's a failure. Huh? I said that. I did say that. He's a failure. You say, well, he's got all of this named after him. I don't care. I want to tell you the church is named after God. Amen. This right here is what's happening in God's eyes, not what's happening out on Donald Trump's golf course. He could care less about that. You've got to realize God ain't interested in none of that. Huh? They don't have no Bible to inform them. You know, the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. See, we're, we're kind of like just, we're not really blind leading, but that's the only example I could give you is just falling around like you're blind. You're trusting God. See, but why? Because God, He wants you to trust Him. The bit, I tell you why God was mad when they said that they, Adam and Eve didn't trust Him. They called Him a liar. Yep. When they said, we, uh, you know, well, surely God won't kill us. Well, they got to experience their firstborn getting stoned to death by their other sons. You know why? Because they believe the devil who was in charge of all the lies. Not only are they dead to Bible information, but they're dead to spiritual instructions. Huh? They, they always depend on what human beings say. Not, not what the Spirit of God says. Huh? When, when, when God leads us, we'll always come out ahead. But when you le you're led by the flesh, or when you're led by humanity, you're going to run your ship into the ground. You know why? Because they're dead to God. What goes on in the world of spirituality don't mean nothing to them. Right. Amen. Do you remember, Brother Ray, when we were growing up, if you wanted gas on Sunday, you better buy it on Saturday. If you planned on going somewhere. 
Why? Because people would close their businesses down. There would be nobody. Why? Because the people were going to church. Hmm? Huh? Do you know another thing about people that are dead to God? They're ignorant of the, the conditions around them. They don't realize, they don't think, Brother Phil, that they could die today. Sure. There's probably not a person in here that says, well, I got up this morning and said, well, you know, today's my last day. You've probably already in your heart made plans what you're going to do tomorrow. Amen. That's not too wise, but we all do it. Sure. Why? Because we're ignorant of what, what life really is and how, how, how fragile life really is. You could get up one morning and just in, on the way to work have a major car wreck and never and you're you'll be in a in a bed the rest of your life but we don't think that why because we don't know how fragile life really is i'm telling you they are ignorant of the conditions they don't know just how bad it really is they don't know the lord of glory brother ray is soon to come and then he is going to unleash hell on earth you think this is bad you ain't seen nothing and you probably won't see nothing because if you're saved you're going to be out of here you're going to these people if you're here without God you know what you're going to experience nothing like you've ever dreamed of right. Amen. Huh? Right. Yeah, tell it. I couldn't I tell you I couldn't I couldn't come up with what I would think would be bad enough times what the tribulation period is going to be like oh, yeah. huh I'm, I'm, mm. it is so bad now listen to this I was watching Billy Graham in 1957 he had 100,000 people Yankee Stadium they showed up at 930 in the morning and here's what he said I cannot believe people are this far away from God in 1957 I told my wife, I said, he'd turn over in his grave if he'd seen what was going on in the church nowadays. Uh, you know why? They, they say this. They say, well, I'm on God's side. They use God as well. But they're not on God's side. Uh, half the so-called church won't even come back to church tonight. Uh, I'm not saying about people that have a reason. I'm not talking about that, those folks. I'm talking about people who just don't have a heart to serve God. They don't want to be here. They don't regret missing church. Right. Huh? They're dead. They're dead to God. Amen. They're ignorant of all the conditions that are around them. How wicked it really is. How bad it's really going to get. Amen. But look in verse 2. You see their deeds are revealed. Look at what he says. He said, and in times past you walked according to the course of this world. You know what they do? Well, whatever the world, you know, whatever's best. You know, when it comes time to vote, you know what, what a lot of church people do? They vote their pocketbook. Yep, yep. Huh? Sure. It ain't about morals. It ain't about what God says. It's about what would be best for the economy. I want to tell you what's best for the economy. You do right and the economy will get better. That's right. Right, right. You serve God and the economy will get better. Right. But you know why you won't do that? Because you don't believe God. If you had confidence in God, uh, uh, you know what you'd do? You'd say, hey, I'm going to stick with the Bible regardless of what the world says. If the ship goes down, I'm going down with it. Why? But they won't. You know why? Because they walk according to the course of this world. Whatever the world says, that's what they say is all right. Yep. Amen. Huh? They walk according to the course. What does the course of the world do? Now, now let me just give you like an example. Yesterday, I've been doing this for years. I, I go up to where Brother Doug's from, Owensville. For 46 years, they've had a car show up there. I've been going up there, not 46 years, but a, a few years. Now, you know what they do, Brother Josh? Every year, they give away an old car. Now, to get that old car, you have to have had an enter. You have to enter a car. But to get that old car, you know what you have to do? You have to be up there on Sunday. Now why is that? Because they walk according to the course of this world. Right. Uh, right. Uh, you'd be surprised at the Christians that would be up there. Well, they're not Christians. Yeah. Yeah, tell it. Come on now. Hmm? You know why? Just to get an old car. Yeah. They're I like them. But I'm not going to forsake God's house to get a car. Right. 
Why? Because I've got a future that's embedded in the Holy Lord God of Heaven. I'm not walking according to the course of this world. I don't agree with what they're doing. Uh, I don't even agree with the conservatives uh, in, in our politics. Uh, the conservatives ain't even conservative. Uh, they walk according to the course. Look at the next thing they do. They said according to the prince of the power of the air that's the devil yeah. you know what they do they do his will yep. Yep. you know what the devil whatever the devil says you know you, I remember back years ago when it was illegal to sell alcohol on Sunday yep. huh? you know you can buy it anytime now up till 1am 1, 1 huh? you know why because they do whatever the devil tells them to. You know, I'm, I'm telling you, we're, we're living in a day where people are so controlled by Satan and his power. And if you say it, half the church gets the, gets the shakes and get real wide around the lips. Why? But I'm telling you, there's a spirit of evil in this world, and that is not the Holy Ghost. That's the devil. The devil is, he, 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 he is just motivating and manipulating people to do things that he wants them to do. You know? I, I still I can't get off of this. I can't understand, Brother Josh. You tell me how a grown man and a grown woman could could take and and kill an unborn baby. That act of abortion. How could you do that? Right. How could a grown man who's went eight, nine years to college become a doctor and not even have enough sense to know that that's a human being? That's right. Huh? I was talking to my son-in-law yesterday. He was telling me, I can't remember who it was, describing to him, uh, describing about these children, that that's really, oh, they said that that's not, a, that, that when they do whatever that is, that they check for the heartbeat of a, a baby, they said that's not a heartbeat. That's what doctors are saying so that they'll save that baby's life. You have to be a total moron. Listen to me. You have to be a total moron to believe that. Huh? Not only that, you don't have to be a moron. You have to be evil to believe that kind of stuff. I'm trying to tell you folks, the devil is running rampant in our country. He's running rampant in our world. And we're sitting by. We don't even, we're like we're asleep. But I'm telling you, he's having his heyday right now. Deeds, they're deeds. But then their works are disobedient to God. Huh? I was telling my wife, I met this girl the other day, a couple months ago. And I sometimes I have these judgmental thoughts. I, and I try not to, but I do. Yeah. Because I know you don't have to have long hair to be a girl. I know that. But most girls don't have burr haircuts. And I thought, boy, that don't look right. So then I found out that she was living with a guy. And I thought, well, I don't approve of that, but at least she's living with a guy. So I was like, all right. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I approve. I ain't saying I'm approving. Well, a couple of weeks after that, I found out some more information. She is a girl, but she wants to be a guy. Her boyfriend is a guy that wants to be a girl. Now, I don't know about you, but that's messed up. I'll say this in front of my wife. I've always liked girls. That's why I married one. But I've never wanted to be one. I'll leave that up to my wife. I'll leave that up to my daughters. I'll leave that up to you ladies. I ain't got no part of that. You know why they're disobedient? That is an act against God. Uh, they're so confused. The world has confused them so much that they're disobedient to the very will of God. Uh, God's will for you. Listen up here, you young girls and you young guys. If you're a boy, His will for you. If you're to get married, marry a girl. And if you're a girl, marry a guy. That's his will. They do that in dis disobedience to God. 
Uh, uh, they promote liquor like a, you know, they, I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of it. Social drinkers, social, social. All drinking is social drinking. Said you just have one. No, you won't have one. There's not too many one drinkers. What, that's a disobedience to God. Uh, one leads to two, two leads to three, and before you know it, you're passed out on the couch. Uh, what is that's a disobedience to God when God tells us that alcohol, there's no good. Like Brother Josh said the other day, there's nothing ever good come out of alcohol. That's a disobedient act against God. Uh, I used to deliver up to, in front of uh, UD, uh, uh, University of Dayton. I'd be up there about the time these kids get out of school. Brother Ray, um, I, I said, it make me so mad. I see this one, one, one right after another. Four cases of alcohol. I said, if I come up here and caught my kid doing that, I'd beat him all the way back to the dorm. Yeah. You're paying for his education and he's laying up here drunk as a skunk? That's disobedient to God. All of that stuff. Huh? You know what? Let me say something that's even more disobedient. Laying out of church when you can be there. Huh? He said, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together as a manner of some is. You know what he said? If you can be here tonight, you're supposed to be here. If you're saved. Now, if you ain't saved, stay home. That's just the Bible. That ain't Ron Little theology. I ain't got none. I'm not smart enough to write this stuff. Huh? They're disobedient. Disobedient to God. But see, they even go worse than that. L look at this in verse, uh, verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the, the desires of the flesh. See, they go farther than their disease, their de deeds. They have desires, things that's in their mind. Sometimes they get them fulfilled and sometimes they don't. Now look what that word desire means. It means your determination, your purpose, your pleasure, your will. Let me say this. Here's what people that are without God is. They're fulfilling the lust of their flesh all the time. I know we struggle with the flesh as Christians, Brother, uh, Brother Jordan. There's nobody in here perfect that don't have, that have got to the place. If you're perfect, you're dead. You're, you're sitting over in the nurse in the morgue like this. Why? Because there's, we're always going to deal with this flesh. But I want to say this. If you're dealing with this flesh and it's always winning, you never conquer, something's wrong with you. You have to have some type of victory over this flesh. Uh, there's something wrong. Why? Because their desire is, I can't get enough. Huh? You know, and, and I don't take this way, well, take it however you want to. I've never seen a, a world in where we are so crazy about sports. Right. It's almost taken over our spirituality. Yeah. Huh. I've heard preachers say, I'm not against, I, I'm, not, I'm not big on sports, and that's all they talk about when they preach. <laughs> I, know that, I know that that's kind of, it's that's harsh. There's nothing wrong with the sports in themselves. But when he gets to where that's all you think about, where all you, that all possesses your mind, I don't care what it is. It's your flesh is conquering you day in and day out. You have a problem. Amen. Your desires are being fulfilled by the world. I want to say this. This is not our home, Brother Clint. We're just passing through. We're pilgrims and strangers. Amen. We're looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. I'm not saying that we, we don't have things that we want and God will let, them have it, let us have them. But He will not let them have us. There has to be a point where you say, I ain't doing it. I've known people, they, when uh, fishing season comes in, like blue, when the bluegill start running, they'll, they'll miss church and go bluegill fishing. I'd love to be God just for that one day. I would. I'd turn their boat over. They'd have to swim. I wouldn't kill them. I'd just make them swim home. Uh, you know, it, it, it bothers me. You think about it. You, you send your son to Calvary. 
Send your son to Calvary and let him be beaten beyond recognition and save this person and then they go fishing yep. on Sunday. Think about it. Huh? That's, 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 that's a thought. Let me tell you this. Some of you, Brother Ray knows, Brother Noah Broughton. He had a boy in his, in his church. This has been probably 20 years ago. Maybe 25. He begged his daddy on deer season, opening day. He said, Daddy, let's go fishing or go hunting. He said, No. He said, uh, It's church day. He would not quit. They went out. Daddy said, Over here. The boy said, Over here. Deer run by and that boy shot. He went down to check on it. He shot his daddy right through the heart. That's, that's terrible. I'm going to tell you something. If he'd have been at church where his daddy wanted to be, he wouldn't have been facing what he's faced. And he's had to live with that the rest of his life. Huh? I'm telling you, not to forsake his house. Huh? But listen to this, though, a little farther. He says, And we're by nature the children of wrath. See, they're fleshly, but they're forsaken by God. You know what God? You know these people say, "Well, I, I've been praying to God. He ain't he ain't listening." Right. He hears only prayer he'll hear from a sinner is, "Father, forgive me." That's right. Yep. Hmm. I want to tell you the worst thing to be in this world. I don't care how much ability you have, the job that you hold. I don't care how good you are at it. We know that Brother Ray's a good carpenter, but for him to depend on his ability, that would that's not that's not good. Why we need God. We need Him in every area. Just to get in your car, you need Him. That's right. To get up of a morning and get your work clothes on or whatever you're doing, you need God. Amen. But these people are forsaken of God. Right. God ain't doing nothing with them. He ain't doing... That's what it says right here, if I'm reading it right. And we're by nature the children... That means that they have the wrath of God abiding on them. Amen. That means if, they, if God don't show you grace today, all day, and grace tomorrow, you know what your family will do? They'll look into your uh, casket and know that you're lost without God. Right. Amen. Huh? They're forsaken. Ain't that sad? Yeah. It'd be bad to be forsaken. It'd be bad to be forsaken by your family, but to be forsaken by God. To know that God ain't doing. But you know what most people do, Brother Brian? They don't even, they don't even think that God's in, doing anything. But look, look at the next thing he says. He says, look, he said, uh, let me find where I'm at here. Among whom also we all had our conversation. Uh, and the, let's see where in times past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the children of disobedience you know what he says you're not in the family of God Amen. do you know what a privilege it is to be sitting here today and to be saved and be in God's family Amen. they're not to be without God brother Donald means that they don't they're not part of it right. uh, I, 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 I tell you I, I, I look at a lot of these people that are basing their relationship to God on what they're doing. They are some of the most miserable people I've ever met. Right. Why? Because you cannot be a part of any family by works. Right. You didn't even have a part to do with whose family you're in. Right. Uh, Brother Ray didn't have no... Uh, he, he wasn't him who come up with the idea that he'd be Ray Roberts. That was his mom and daddy. And that's the same way with this. See, their deeds, their desires, they're not in this family. And you know what? There's a lot of people today who say, I wished, I wished, I don't want nothing to do with God. And they're shaking their fist in his face. Huh? Look. Look at this. It says in verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you sometimes were far off. You know what? There's a, di there's a distance. You know why they're a distance? from you and God you don't believe him yeah. Yeah. the only thing that keeps people from being lost is they don't believe it ain't God brother James ain't never sent somebody to hell for being an alcoholic right. he's never sent them to hell for being an adulterer he only sends people to hell for unbelief right. Right. and you're an alcoholic because you're an unbeliever yeah. right. you're an adulterer because you're an unbeliever
And I'm trying to tell you today, they're distanced from God because they don't believe Him. Right. You know what they don't believe? They don't believe that God is coming back soon. Right. They don't believe that Jesus could come back today. Do you realize, Brother Ray, before we get out of here or before we get back tonight, Jesus could come back? Jesus could come back. But if you're here without God, you're saying, I ain't no way. I've heard that. I've, I've even had my family brother Josh tell me, he said, they've been saying that all my life. And you know what? It's been true all your life. He's coming back. And he's closer to being coming back than he's ever been. He's closer. You know why? Because he, he described to us, Brother Ray, how, what would be the conditions of his return. Scoffers. Yeah. Scoffers. You know what? Every time somebody stands up and says, I don't believe that, that's more proof that he's coming back. Yeah. Listen to this. He says, they're distanced because they haven't had a blood atonement. He said, he said but you're far off, but you're made nigh by the blood. You know what? The only thing that makes a difference between me and the lost person? This blood. It's powerful. Like Brother Phil got up and said, talking about what he used to be, and that's what we all are used to be. We're not what we used to be. I don't care if you're religious. I don't care if you're a fallen down drunk. I don't care what. If you're the nicest person in the world, but you needed Christ. You needed Jesus. And you needed His blood. I'm telling you, the only thing that's made us different is not because we do come to church, but it's because of this blood that's been applied to our lives. It's powerful. It's powerful. This blood will cleanse us, make a new person out of us. It'll give us a new desire. When I was, I'm going to be honest with you. If you would have went to my high school when I was a kid and said, now this guy right here is going to be a preacher, they'd laughed you out of that place. Huh? They said, that guy, you've lost your mind. Ain't no way. See, they don't know the power of my Savior. I didn't have no desire to do that, but I didn't have his blood applied. Huh? Now listen to this, and I'm closing. I'm glad that God told me about verse 12, being without God. But I'm glad that he didn't let it stop there. Uh, look, he said, but now in Christ Jesus. He said, now, if you look at this, he talks about past, pre uh, past present, and the future. Look what he says here. He said, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood. He shows us our delivery. You know what? If you're here without God, you can get delivered today. Amen. That's what, you know, when these two ladies have these babies, you know what they're going to do? They're going to take them to a delivery room. Hmm? That's what they're called. I guess I haven't, we haven't had no babies in a long time and they ain't planning on having none now. But what I'm telling you, when we were doing it, they called it the delivery room. Why? Because there was going to be a baby come on board on this family. And you know what he said? Here's our delivery. They're all met in Christ. But now in Christ Jesus, you cannot put anything on what you're doing that will be acceptable to God. The only thing that God will accept is His precious Son. When you step up into heaven, He's going to look for one answer. Why should I let you in? And you say, Jesus is the only reason I should be here. You cannot say, I've been good, I've worked, I've done this, I've been a good husband, I've been a good wife, I've been a good this and that, I went to work all the time. God won't accept that. He'll accept Christ Jesus. That's all He'll accept. I won't accept nothing else. Huh? Look at the verse 14. For He is our peace. Huh? See, because of Christ... The next thing he does is he removes all the charges that is charged against you. No matter how big nor small. No matter what they are. He'll take all the charges and drop them. Well, that's a good day. I would ask you today, if you're here and lost, you need to come. Huh? You need to come. I'm telling you, folks, in closing, it's a serious thing to be sitting here and to be without God. He's the only hope you have. Did you see what I read here? He said, he said, you're in this world with no hope. No hope. 
No hope. No hope of what? No hope of making heaven your home. No hope of being in the family of God. No hope of ever doing anything for Jesus. Folks, I'm trying to tell you, as Brother Josh comes, and they come with a song, you need, you need to get saved today as we stand to our feet. You need to come today and get saved. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.